Um, so what this is, this is a marriage between the DJI Air 2S, no, scratch that. This is a marriage between the DJI Mavic Air 2 and the DJI 2 Pro. All right. No, it has Mavic in it. Why did they take Mavic out and then put Mavic in? I don't understand. What's up y'all, Sean here. So today is the day. It is DJI Air 2S day. Um, the drone has been announced. It was announced a couple hours ago on DJI's website. Um, so today is April 15th, 2021. Um, and this drone is ready for purchase. So what this drone is, is a marriage between the DJI Mavic Air 2 and the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. You slam those together and you've got the DJI Air 2S. The biggest change that they've made to this drone is that they removed the word Mavic. And they put a one inch sensor in it. And they added a 1.0 to the A-Pass and the tracking and stuff like that. Oh, and they put two sensors on top. So now it can avoid things in four directions. So that's cool. So what we're going to do today is we are going to run through the trailer video, we're going to run through the website, and we're going to see what this drone is all about and whether you should purchase it. Um, I run my channel on affiliate links, so if you would like to buy the DJI Air 2S, if you buy it through my description below, that would be wonderful. I would love you forever. But let's check this video out. Alright, so that was the video, that was a trailer video on DJ's website about the Air 2S, what it can do, what its capabilities are. Um, so I think there's some really cool things in there. I love the ability to fly around things. Um, I'm a cautious flyer, so um, when I'm flying my drones, I tend to not even need an A-Pass system. But if you're planning on doing crazy maneuvers, going around, going through things, um, you know, if especially if you want it to track you and you want to go mountain biking through the woods or something like that, it's going to need to know where those trees are and how to avoid them. Um, I control my drones via the controller, uh, so I don't tend to use those capabilities. Um, but every once in a while, they come in handy when I'm near a tree or a wire or something like that. 
Something else is it has a one inch sensor. Um, one inch sensor is great. It's great in low light. Um, you basically have, it's like, you know, you having four times the size of the eyeballs on your face that you have today. You've got a lot more um, room to capture. You've got a bigger sensor to take in more information and get more resolution, better dynamic range. You've got a lot of a um, lot of goodness in that sensor. So uh, the drones that I have that have one-inch sensors on it, I have a unique Typhoon H Plus with a one-inch sensor, and I have the uh, Autel Evo 2 Pro that has a one-inch sensor on it. And I will tell you that a one-inch sensor makes a lot of difference over, you know, the tiny little sensor that that we've had on on our other DJI drones. So the one-inch sensor is a great great improvement. Um, all right, so now let's get into the specs. All right, y'all, so we're here at the website. Um, this is a beautiful shot of the DJI Air 2S, um, all in one. Um, so we're gonna scroll down and see what we've got going on. Capture it all. Featuring the one inch CMOS sensor, powerful autonomous functions, and a compact body weighing less than 600 grams. Um, so that's what makes this that is the money statement right there. So this is what's new. Um, there's obviously some more functionality, but as far as the hardware, there's a one inch sensor. Um, they've improved the autonomous functions and um, it, it's a pretty small drone. So we've got the one inch CMOS sensor. We've got master shots, which are pretty cool. We'll get into that, to, get into that in a minute. 5.4K video, which is an improvement over the 4K on the Mavic Air 2. Um, 12 kilometer transmission, obstacle sensing in four directions, and it still has the same air sense. All right. So the air sense kind of lets you know that there's other aircrafts in the area that you need to watch out for. Um, big world, big sensor. So we're going to learn about the one inch sensor here. Um, so equipped with a one inch sensor, the large 2.4 UM pixels, the DJI Air 2S is capable of 5.4K 30 frames per second and 4K 60 frames per second. So the DJI Mavic Air 2, I believe, was capable of 4K 60 frames per second. So the only thing that we've really done here is we've added the 5.4K. Um, and the only, so the capturing of the image might not be much different and the sensor just might add extra resolution. So let's see what's going on. So here is the sensor from the Air 2 and this is the Air 2S. Bam! 20 megapixel um, one inch sensor. So that's pretty cool. Um, one thing I mentioned that the one inch sensor is good for low light. Um, you basically have bigger eyeballs on your face. It's like, if you think about like an owl, um, the owls have really big eyes so they can see at night. That's pretty much what your one inch sensor is doing for you. Um, you got 1 billion colors captured a 10 bit D log in. So D log is something where you record kind of grayscale type uh, video, like very low saturated video so that you can get a lot of the details and then you add your saturation back in later. Um, so here's just an example of that, but 10 bit color is awesome. So let's play through this. So see how it's kind of desaturated and then we add the colors later in post. So that's what that's about. Most consumers don't use D-Log or M-Log. Yeah, D-Log M. <laughs> but, um, but for professionals, this is pretty awesome. Um, you can shoot raw, 12.6 um, stops. So that's pretty awesome. So basically what raw does is if you didn't get it right while you were filming it or taking it, well, this is probably for pictures. Um, if you didn't get it right when you were taking the picture, uh, you can go back and adjust the exposure later because you've captured all that information. Uh, most times when you're, when you're taking a picture in JPEG, you know, if you expose this sky correctly, you might not expose this down here correctly. So it lets you go back in and tweak things. 
Um, and here's HDR technology, merged multiple shots automatically increasing dynamic range. Um, so kind of back to the raw thing, um, it'll take multiple images exposing the sky, exposing the land, exposing these lights. They all require different exposures and then it combines all of that to bring it closer to what your eyes can see. Hyperlapse and panoramas, I'm super excited about this. So let's start out here. There's beautiful hyperlapses. Um, basically what it does is it um, takes a bunch of pictures um, as, it's, as it's moving around through time and then you bring those pictures in to increase the speed of the video. Um, so if you think about if you've got a video that's 30 frames per second but you take an image every five seconds, um, so 30 times five is 150 seconds you know, takes 150 um, seconds to record one second of video. So it looks super fast. And with a drone, it's pretty awesome because you're like flying through 3D space and doing it at the same time. Um, it's got wide angle. The wide angle shots are great whenever you're, um, oh, it's jumping on me. So wide angle is great for taking pictures of large uh, landscapes where there's a lot of information to see. Here's a 180 panorama which is pretty awesome. I don't know if the wide angle is done with nine shots or if it's just one picture. Uh, 180, um, it would have to take multiple shots to get the 180. And then we've got spear mode, which is basically tiny planet or complete 360 degree uh, photo. The only downside with the DJI drones in doing this compared to like the Peridonafi is that the drone can't look up so all of this information is fake. It's software generated and it doesn't have a very good um, zenith right there. So there's that. Um, but still super cool that you can do this with that drone. Um, these are master shots, I believe. So let's see what master shots are all about. So let's start out with portrait. Um, basically what it does is your drone will go around and fly, get a whole bunch of different um, industry standard B-roll, and then it'll clip together this little video for you. So, um, you know, it'll do a droney, it'll do a helix, it'll do an orbit, you know, do all those kind of quick shots that you've had in the past, but it'll actually make a really cool video for you. Um, here's proximity. Um, proximity looks like you are just getting the subject and what's around it. Um, and it looks like you're not getting too close to the subject where portrait you are getting right up on the subject. Um, and then landscape is, you know, a quick way to show, you know, just a beautiful landscape. Um, usually done, done well if you have a large subject of like a mountain or cityscape or something like that. Um, so let's do center of attention, focus track features, spotlight 2.0, active track 4.0, and point of interest 3.0. So spotlight 2.0, um, the camera stays centered on the subject as you fly in a spiral and take close-up shots. So um, this is a complex move if you were doing this by hand because you're going you're getting up close to the subject and you're moving around the subject while it's moving um, and it says down here the zoom function also enables clear shots at a distance um, so let's go to active track 4.0 um, active track 4.0 just kind of follows the subject kind of from side to side point of interest easily take perfect circle shots while keeping the subject centered. So um, you kind of put your drone on a path and you point at a subject and I mean, this is awesome. Just look at the background, look at what effect you can put on your videos. So um, autonomous flight is amazing when it comes to drones, so I love it. Um, so these are some images that were shot on it. And let's, this is, I think this is the last thing we're gonna talk about. This is kind of the A-pass. Um, so if you were like riding your bike through the woods, you could fly your drone around trees and it would, instead of just stopping when it gets near a tree, like all of our drones used to do, um, this will, 
use 3D space to figure out um, you know how to fly around things. Um, these are the sensors. It's got an upward sensor, forward sensor, downward sensor, and backward sensor. So before you just had forward, downward, and backward. So now we have an upward sensor that uh, will help keep us from flying up into branches and stuff like that. And then it's got AccuSync 3.0, which is 12 kilometer transmission. Uh, you get a 1080 video and you've got four antennas that are both 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz um, compatible. Um, and then Safer Sky. So the AirSense uh, notices who's in your airspace and lets you keep away from helicopters and bring your drone down when you need to. Um, so get the most out of the Air 2S. Um, here's the Fly More package. So what you get in the Fly More combo is you get the controller, you get ND filters, which we haven't gotten in the past in a combo, a Fly More combo. They might have come in the Mavic 2 Pro, but I never got that drone. Um, we got three batteries, uh, we've got extra blades, and we've got a nice bag. Um, I have this bag. Uh, it might be a little different, but um, super cool bag. Very durable, nice zippers. Um, got ND filters, smart controller, and uh, yeah, that's it. So let's hit the specs real quick. I'm not going to go through every spec, but I want to run through a couple things that they don't really tell you. So, um, so here we have the max flight time with no wind, 31 minutes, and flight time of 30 minutes. Um, the flight time for the DJI Mavic Air 2 is 34 minutes. So what they've done is they've shaved some time off of this because you have a heavier camera. Um, most of the specs are kind of the same. Um, flat, the batteries I think are exactly the same. Uh, so we've got a one inch sensor. Have you heard that it's got a one inch sensor? I don't think I've said that enough. But yeah, it has a one inch sensor. Field of view is 88 degrees. Um, I wanted to get to the resolutions. All right, so video resolution. So 5.4K, um, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. Um, 2.7K only goes up to 60 frames per second. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But at 1080, you can do 120 frames per second. So that's pretty cool. But I wish you could at least do 2.7K at 120 frames per second. But it is what it is. Um, but I wanted to get into the digital zoom. It talks about digital zoom, but they kind of glance over it. Like if they say up to eight times zoom, which whenever they say that, to me, it's kind of a load of bull. Just because you can't zoom at 5.4K. So there's a lot of people that are going to fly this drone at 5.4K and then try to zoom in and they're going to realize, oh, this drone doesn't even zoom in. It also says zoom recording is not available while recording 10-bit videos and 120 frames per second. So you can't zoom if you're going to do 120 frames per second and you can't use a zoom function 10-bit at all. So 4K 10-bit videos, no zoom. But if you fly regular like kind of consumer grade video, you can zoom in four times, okay? You can zoom in six times at 2.7K um, and 1080, 30 frames per second, you can zoom in at eight times. So I think this is kind of silly, okay? What I would do is I would record 10-bit video at 5.4K and then zoom in in post. So the whole point of having a drone that can record this much resolution right here is being able to zoom in on that video. Um, but the drone does not have the capabilities to zoom in on the video. So to me, like this right here is what the Peridonafi can do. You know what I mean? Like we had the Peridonafi years ago and it could do, I think 2.7 times 
lossless zoom. So basically what it was doing was recording a larger video, outputting it 4K, so it could stabilize and you could zoom in. So that's all I really wanted to get to with the specs. So yeah. Oh, and something else that's interesting, the smart controller transmission system is OcuSync 2.0 but the drone transmits at 3.0. So I'm not sure what is going on there. So those are some discrepancies that I found on their spec sheet. Um, yeah, back to you, Sean. Um, the only thing that I see that is, is improved in the specs is all the 1.0s. So they've improved their, um, you know, their, their software uh, functionality. There's two more sensors on top um, and it shoots 5.4K video. Um, the negatives of the specs is that it has less of a flying time than the DJI Mavic Air 2. So the DJI Mavic Air 2 can fly for four more minutes, um, but that's because they put a bigger camera on the drone. So everything else, in my opinion, is exactly the same. So if you don't have the DJI Mavic Air 2 yet, then go out and get you Air 2S. There's links in the description. If you already have the Mavic 2 Pro, I don't know if you need this drone. So that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, that's it, y'all. Hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was informative. Um, I like to be honest with my reviews. I'm not one of those guys that is being paid a lot of money to make a company look good. Um, I'm more of the honest reviewer that, you know, kind of buys things off the shelf and tell you for real whether you should get it or not. Um, but again, I'm always excited about new toys. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I hope you guys like this video. Please like, subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell for notifications when I put out more videos about the DJI Air 2S. Drones, action cameras, live streaming, all the good stuff, y'all. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.